Battle of Glorietta Pass in Apache Canyon stand as the high watermark of Henry Sibley's invasion of New Mexico. We're on location today here in Glorietta Pass. Behind me, Pigeon Ranch. And we're going to look at what the sites look like and how in these various locations the battle transpired. We're starting our journey to Glorietta Pass Battlefield here further down the valley at the site of just north of Koslowski's Ranch, which is today the Pecos National Historical Park, and it contains mostly Native American ruins. At dawn on March 28, the forces of the United States military left Kozlowski's Ranch down the valley in that direction, coming up to Pigeon's Ranch right here behind us. And they were about 800 men in size. Their opponents, the rebel forces, coming down the Glorietta Valley from the other side had about 1,200 men ready for battle. At 11 o'clock, the engagement opened down the valley with the Texans meeting troops from Colorado and U.S. regulars. It was a very swift engagement out there. For 10 minutes they fought and then marched down this valley. We have a second engagement a little bit up the road from here. And here at Pitchens Ranch is the final stand of the U.S. forces. The ranch house behind us it would have been an adobe wall behind which Sloss's forces placed artillery and made sure to have the open ground in front of them covered with that artillery. The high ground to our side here contained force, uh, cavalry forces with repeater rifles that were supposed to shoot into the rebel flanks. High ground on that side had the force of Colonel Tapin. Uh, Tapin's force was too small for the grounds covered. There were holes in the line. And it was that side that eventually, as well as the center, had to give way. The Coloradians and their U.S. regular support decided to withdraw back to Kozlowski's ranch, leaving the field here open for the rebels to occupy. However, Fighting in other parts of this battle was pivotal in making sure that a victory for the U.S. forces ensued. Here at Pitchens Ranch, U.S. forces left behind a large number of wounded men 
as well as a lot of British Confederates. After the battle, wagon trains came up, removes the wounded U.S. soldiers, buries the U.S. dead, and his Alice Confederate dead getting buried up here. We're now on the final battlefield of the Battle of Glorieta Pass and Apache Canyon. Doesn't look like much. Um, unfortunately, much of the area today is closed off and Johnson's Ranch is unfortunately gone, of course. But here, at the same time that the Battle of Glorieta Pass is taking place on Pigeon's Ranch over the mountains behind us, Shivington's cavalry and infantry force which had peeled off from Sloth's forces in the morning hours, had gone over the tops of this ridge and was making their way down that ridge where we see the embankment in the middle. Shivington stayed behind with a couple of men to provide covering fire down into the valley. Down here in the valley, Colonel Scurry had left behind about 200 men, most of whom were injured from the battle of the previous day, and as well as 80 wagons. All of the supplies of Scurry's first force were down here. They had only taken enough for the day up towards the battlefield at Glorietta Pass. Shivington's men came down the ridge, struck this camp. Many of Scurry's men fled on horseback, on foot. Some got captured down here. Shivington was unsure what happened at Glorietta Pass, however. And as a result, he eventually withdrew as daylight was fading. His men, as well as the captured Confederates, were scrambling their way up that ridge behind us. And as they're making their way to the top, the fuses they had lit down here reached the powder and down here in the valley, we have a massive set of explosions taking place. All of Scurry's ammunition, supplies, medical equipment, all is gone. With that, Scurry has to withdraw. Yes, Slaw and Shivington will withdraw, but so do the rebels as well. And at the end of the day, it is the battle here at Glorietta Pass that ends Sibley's New Mexico invasion and forces him to withdraw back to Texas, saving New Mexico for the United States. Hidden along the roadside, just south of Pigeon Ranch, are these monuments regarding the Battle of Glorietta Pass. They had also discovered rebel soldiers buried near Glorietta Pass battlefield, and the remains of these soldiers were eventually, about 30 years ago, relocated to the Santa Fe National Cemetery. One of the things we should consider that is oftentimes commented on by, the, by both sides, really, during the battle, is the low visibility and as we look around through this landscape, we can really see why they complain so much about low visibility. It's so surprising, actually, considering having walked this part here a little bit, how little they complain about the ability to step places, how much undergrowth there is. Um, but the visibility is definitely an issue with all this tree growth. A large contributing factor to the victory of the U.S. forces in the long game of this battle even though they withdraw, is that the Confederate side, both on this side as well as on the southern side of us, loses a large body of officers. Meaning that, unfortunately, the rebels are in a much dire situation than the U.S. forces under Colonel Sloth. 